Hi everyone, my name's Annette and welcome back to Cotto Verde. If you haven't been here before, then you won't know that we've had untold deer pressure this year. They've eaten absolutely everything. We went away for two weeks earlier in the year and came back to a garden that had been decimated by deer. So we've made the decision to put a deer fence in along this line here um, where we planted a row of yew trees as a hedge. Um, the ewes are doing really well except that the first metre of them gets completely munched away by the deer so that they can get through and get into my garden where all the juicy nibbles are. I don't know why they're not interested in what's going on the other side of this hedge because that's a massive garden on the other side of this hedge. I mean maybe they're eating in there too, I don't know, but they're definitely eating in here. We get roe deer and we also get monk jack deer so um, we get pressure from uh, like all around. We we also get lots of badgers and foxes but they don't seem to have been as big a problem. You're probably wondering how I know that it's the deer. Well um, obviously the first sign is the poop but the second sign is that we've seen um, footprints, deer prints, hoof prints? <laughs> We've seen her prints in our beds, so it's definitely the deer. It's been, you know, really clear. If I've got a video, I'll try and pop it up here to show you that it, you know, it was really obvious that it was the deer. And with all the poop in the garden, that definitely belongs to the deer. We know it was the deer. Um, also, you can kind of tell because of the height that everything's get eaten up to. So anything above a certain height doesn't get munched, but everything below sort of deer height is being eaten. And if it was, you know, foxes or rabbits, it would be the very low stuff that gets eaten. Just to explain a bit about um, the fence that we've put in here. We have chosen to put in, um, it's a wire fence and the posts are made from timber. Um, the distance between the posts is determined by the size of your posts. Apparently, this is what I've been told by the fencing experts. So our posts are three inches in diameter and the distance between the posts is between um, eight and nine feet. And the reason that it's an approximate distance between the posts where you normally space them very evenly is because, as you can see, we planted some yew trees um, quite a few years ago and they've really grown, which is fantastic, apart from where they're being eaten by the deer. But because we've got the trees in already, obviously they can't put a post in exactly where a tree is. So some of our posts um, may not be exactly nine foot between them. Some of them are more like eight foot. I think one of them is about seven and a half foot. So um, it just, it varies depending upon, you know, whether there was a tree in the way where they wanted to put the posts. Um, <laughs> But if you have smaller timber posts, like maybe a two inch or two and a half inch timber post, then the distance between your posts is going to be smaller. Um, I want to talk a bit about the actual fence that we've put in, so the wire fencing. Because we get pressure from both kinds of deer, so we get the little monk jack deer and we also get the, the taller deer, the roe deer. Um, and we know this because we see them in the garden, like I hear them at night munching and I come out and I can see them. So um, because we get both kinds, we um, had to get a fence that was suitable for both. First of all, it's a six foot tall fence, which is quite difficult for a roe deer to get over. They'd injure themselves if they tried to get over that. But um, what the um, fencing supplier supply is a fence that has smaller distances at the bottom between the horizontal wires. Um, and a larger distance at the top between horizontal wires because um, you don't need to protect the top half from the, the monk jack deer which are much smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distances at the bottom between the wires and then measure the distances at the top and I'll let you know because I can't remember off the top of my head. I mean the fence just comes supplied like this um, but it's basically to tackle both kinds of deer. So the first foot of the deer fence, um, the wires are spaced four inches apart. So you've got a wire right at the very bottom and then every four inches there's another wire. And then it's graduated so it seems to be like four and a half inches or five inches for the next spacing and then it seems to move to six inches and then another six inches and then seven inches. So yes then it's graduated to the top where at the very top, the top two rows or three rows of wire um, seem to be about 10 inches apart. So basically the, the wires at the bottom are four inches apart and then it gradually increases in spacing till you get to the top where they are 10 inches apart. 
and apparently a six foot tall fence um, is going to be quite difficult for the roe deer to get over. In fact, they're unlikely to. So then the vertical wires seem to be about six inches apart and that's um, standard all the way along. Um, and then how they've attached them to the wooden fence posts is just with some um, u-shaped nails I don't I, can't remember, I don't know what the name is for them but I think you can find them quite easily and they've just hammered those in um, and that has secured them to the fence posts before the hedge was installed we got the hedge trimmer out and we trimmed the yew trees back as far as we possibly could um, without you know completely decimating them but we basically wanted we want this fence to be inside the yew hedge so that we don't really see it which is why you know we haven't put in anything particularly fancy we basically want it to still look like a yew hedge so we've put the fence in as far as we possibly can inside the yew hedge and then what we've done is we've pulled some branches through the wires um, so that you know they're not all squashed up against the fence and they start they grow through and become more of a hedge this side. It's caused a few problems having the hedge here first before we put the fence in um, so do try to do it the other way around if you possibly can but um, we thought that you know the yew hedge was going to be a pretty robust you know boundary to our property but what we didn't realize was that the deer really like to eat the yew hedge. Apparently conifers taste quite citrusy and I think the deer must like that because they've definitely eaten holes in the yew hedge. This area here is really thick and wonderful and you can see that they haven't munched their way through that but as you come along here and if you look between these two yew trees here you can see that it's very sparse where they've eaten their way through. So, and between this tree and this tree, you can see that it's sparse as well. And that's basically where they come through. So they've eaten, you know, all the way from the bottom up to about a metre. And then as you get higher up, it's much, much thicker because they don't eat the top bit. It doesn't look as thick as the mo at the moment because we obviously had to trim it back. But that's, they just come through there. So all the way along this hedge, it sort of gets thicker and then it gets thinner. That's another area there where they come through and it's all just branches. So, you know, this is how lovely it looks when it's not been nibbled. And then where it has been nibbled, you can just see straight through to the path next door and you know it's just all bare branches so we've had to put the fence up um even though the yew hedge is here it has meant that you know they've uh, the guys who put it in have done their absolute best to make it it's definitely robust and strong but they tried to make it straight but actually what's happened is that the wire um isn't necessarily uh, it's basically not as good as it would be if we didn't have the hedge there already so we've got the hedge in and the wire has sometimes had to sort of bend around a particular yew tree because um, it sticks out a bit too much. So if you look at it, you know, right the way along the edge, then perhaps it's not as straight as you'd like it to be. But for me, I am delighted with it. I know that it's strong and it's in place and over, you know, in the next year, definitely in the next two years, you won't be able to see the actual fence at all. You'll just see the yew hedge and that's what we wanted. So it's going to be a really good barrier, but um, it'll be hidden inside the yew hedge. Yay! <laughs> so this is where a post is here, and then it sort of bends out very slightly to get past, you know, these trees and get into the next post. But it really is as straight as they possibly could make it. And then you can see that um, they've, you know, pulled branches through so that it starts growing back this side. So this is a really good example of where the deer are eating their way through our yew hedge. So this is a pillar on the end with the end post that has been screwed into the pillar. And then this bit of yew tree is really nice and bushy. And then this gap here, you can see right the way through to the apple tree in the orchard next door. And those are the trunks of the apple tree. And this whole gap here is where they've just eaten the yew hedge so that they can get through the space. 
So we're very lucky because on each end of the yew hedge um, there are two brick pillars and so what we've done is we've put a half post, it's been sawn vertically and we've attached that to the brick pillars and that way we've been able to finish the fence by just attaching it in the same way with the little um, yew bend nails, whatever they're called, um, to those half timber posts which are attached to the brick pillar and uh, that made our life very easy but I think if it was a standalone fence you'd have to finish it differently with like braces in order to keep it uh, sturdy and upright but fortunately we haven't had to do that. The other thing I want to mention is about the yew hedge. The yew hedge has been in for about five or six years now I think and when we bought the yew hedge we bought individual yew trees and in order to economise um, we <laughs> We alternated the yew trees between um, the more expensive ones that were a metre tall and the less expensive ones that were about 80 centimetres tall. And so we just did, you know, a metre tall, 80 centimetres tall, and we hoped that by the time it got to the right height that it would sort of even out. And actually it's worked wonders. You can see where some of these yew trees are about eight foot tall now. Um, but that's absolutely fine because what we're going to do is um, once they've all reached the top of the fence, so six foot tall, and once they're looking a bit healthier, we're going to top the hedge off. We don't want it to keep growing forever. Um, and then we're going to create like a nice, um, you know, wavy pattern on the top because I do want it to look sort of architecturally interesting. Also, this is our... Uh, boundary line it's our responsibility to maintain this hedge and I just wanted to mention that because people might have questions about it. I think that's pretty much all the information I can give you about the fence and how we put it in and why we put it in this way. Um, as I said I would definitely recommend putting a fence in before you put a hedge in um, but it is uh, feasible to do it this way around if you're in dire need like we were. <laughs> If you've got any questions at all then do leave them in the comments below and if you're interested to see how the U hedge does over the next few years then do subscribe to my channel because I will definitely be keeping everybody updated. Anyway thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. I think conifers taste quite quite, uh, quite citrusy. I think conifers taste quite, quite my god, eaten their way through so that that's Max on the other side. Clearly not cat proof.